Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you to this edition of Living the Little Way of St. Therese. And uh, this afternoon, I have with me Jack Pellman, who is a uh, freshman at the School of Mines in Rapid City. Uh, and I'd like to talk today a little bit about what it means to be uh, of a servant's heart. Uh, Christ calls us to live uh, in a way that reaches out to other people and helps them always be able to see Christ in our actions toward them. And so I welcome you, Jack. And I'm, Thanks for having me. Well, I am so appreciative for you being here this afternoon. I, I kind of like to start with this. You know, one of the things that I have become aware of over the five years that I've been here is, you know, that you really do have a servant's heart, that you are always willing to step up and say, yes, I'll be willing to help. Um, tell me a little bit about where you learned that. I mean, it, uh, to be honest, it kind of started with like, I, I saw other kids serving, I saw older kids serving when I was in like second or first grade, and then they really needed servers when I was in third grade. So, and normally I think they started at fourth grade. So I started serving in third grade and I really, I really enjoyed it. At the time it was just kind of like, pretty like uh, short-sighted, I guess, by me, because I just like, oh yeah, mass goes a lot quicker whenever I'm serving. I, I just really enjoyed it at the time, and I, just, I still enjoy it now. So when you, you know, were little and, you know, were much younger and serving mass, uh, it gave you a sense of wanting to be involved, wanting to be involved in various aspects of the church, and certainly that's continued on, you know, now as an adult, you're active not only in continuing to help out if we ever do need a server. You came, you know, for almost a whole year during COVID every single uh, weekend to serve. And so I was really appreciative of that, but also your service as Eucharistic minister and uh, the whole variety of ways that you're always willing to say, yes, I'll help you do this or that. Um, Sometimes I, I, I ask people, you know, you learn those things from home. Um, how did your parents teach you that? So my, my dad was always big on, like, responsibility. He would always, he always was kind of big on um, hard work, I guess. And, I mean, this is more or less the same thing. You're just working for... Working for God, right? Yeah, you, you're working for God. You're not working for humans or working to make money or working for just another thing of, the, of this world. You're working for something that's much more important. So that was really, really helpful. You learned that from your dad. What did you learn from your mom? She... She, she was definitely more so like really helped me think about like, I guess, more empathy, I guess, and how she, she like really wanted me to focus on how other people like would, would see my actions. And that, that was really helpful, especially with serving because like I said earlier, like I really watched other people serve before me, like older kids serve before me. And I, I really liked it. I really liked watching them. And so I started doing it, and now I'm I'm kind of I feel like I'm kind of doing that same thing, and I and I hope that there's a lot of pe like younger kids that are watching me now, and they kind of pick up on it the way that I did. And I think that that that's exactly right. Not only do you have the ability to um, demonstrate that to them, but I think you also have the ability to have a competency about what you're doing that gives them a sense of of. Uh, say, yeah, I can do that too. Yeah. They watch you and you anticipate. Yeah, and that the competency kind of just comes with experience. I mean, I've been doing it since, like I said, I was in third grade, so it's been nine, nine years at this point. You also were a pontifical server for a while. And yeah, for, for a little while. That was an interesting experience. Yeah, that's a completely different kind mm -hmm. of serving when you do that. Jack, I'd like to go back to um, a word that you used earlier. You used the word empathy, and literally, empathy means the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Um, that's an important skill. How has that 
helped you live your Christian faith as uh, a person of service? It really helps me to understand other people's like points of view because we're all human. Like the, we have a lot of differences about or between us, but ultimately there's not too much different. We're, we're all made in God's image and likeness, and there's a lot of similarity between each and every person. So if you base what the actions you do, the words you say, the thoughts that you have, if you base them off of what you think like you would want to hear or you would want done to you, then it really helps you to make a lot better choices and say a lot better words, I would say. One of the things that I think um, is a skill that you also have is that you're patient. Um, and I know sometimes you may not see that in yourself, but I see it when you are working with other people that you're very accommodating and patient with them. Um, that if you're working with someone, let's say a littler person that is learning how to serve, you let them do the job. You let them uh, take their place and, and do what they need to do. Um, and that gives them a sense of competence and a sense of importance. And I can see Jesus in that, you know, that that's how Jesus was with his disciples. Um, that's an important skill. Tell me about how you feel about that. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely an important skill. It, like, especially when I'm with younger kids, that, that way they can kind of figure it out for themselves. Like there's a lot of things that when I was younger, I didn't really like, I guess there, there's a lot of things that I don't necessarily like focus on a lot now that I did when I was younger. And that was because I was able to like, when, like when I'm serving, like the very small nuances, I really focused on those when I was younger and now I don't so much. So it's, it's better for the younger kids to figure out some stuff for themselves yep. and that way you can like kind of figure out what you need to act what what you need to focus on and you're there to help guide that as they go mm -hmm. you went out to the school of mines uh, this past uh, August to begin your freshman year um, and that represented a whole new dimension now to your life how have you translated some of that service kind of orientation out there or maybe you're still searching for ways to fit that in yeah I'm definitely still still figuring it out for the most part um, I plan on getting involved with the campus ministry at some point it was definitely difficult it's it's, it's such a different experience out there like n I mean you no know parents there's as much you can take on as much responsibility as you want to and it takes a little bit of getting used to, and I'm, I'm still working on that for sure. Well, yeah, it's kind of like being in a completely new field mm -hmm. and, and trying to figure it out. Tell me a little bit about um, what's different about campus ministry at um, the School of Mines and then, let's say, your home parish here at St. Therese. Here, a lot of the kids have their like, parents to kind of guide them and keep them going to church every Sunday. So I guess... They kind of understand, I guess they understand that there's that freedom and ultimately it's up to you to make the choice to get involved, go to church every Sunday, whatnot. If you were, if you had one thing that you could say to young people that are uh, maybe freshmen, sophomore in high school, what would you tell them about how to live their faith? I would say the best way to live your faith is definitely look look into the problems that you see in yourself and not necessarily look for the problems that you see in, in other people because it's it's a lot easier to fix yourself before you go and try to fix mm -hmm. the world yeah. you you need to make sure that you have your house in order before before you take on the big the big issues in the world and it's really helpful when you lo look into yourself on that because then you can kind of like see like, oh yes, I'm doing this, this, and this wrong. And then you just like need to slowly start to actually like get rid of them over time. And it, it takes time. It takes, it's, it's frustrating. And it's hard work. It's, yeah, it's hard work, but it's rewarding. 
You made a comment one time to me about um, sometimes we have to deal with situations in this world where we're dealing with big problems and sometimes broken people. Um, we can look at other people's faults and we can pull back and say, hey, I don't want to be involved with you. I don't want to be of service to you because you're way different than I am. Mm -hmm. um, how, how does that play into our faith to be more like Jesus? Like, I, I have a lot of friends who don't necessarily, aren't, aren't very close to Jesus, and I just try to treat them with respect. I mean, you, you kind of have to trust in God that He will bring them back to the faith at some point, and... Th you just walk with them then. Yeah, yeah, you, you kind of have to walk with them. Like, like I was saying before, you need to kind of fix the imperfections in yourself before you can try to fix, fix the, somebody else, fix somebody else's imperfections, and it's it's frustrating and difficult, but it it takes time and, and effort. You know, over the past two years, we've been faced with some challenges because of COVID. A lot of the opportunities that when you were going through confirmation, we would do things like go to the banquet or mm -hmm. uh, go to various opportunities in the community where we could be of service, and a lot of that dried up. Um, do you think that there are bigger challenges now for people to get involved, or uh, is that starting to get more normal again? I would say it's, it's definitely starting to get normal. I mean, it, it's ultimately going to come down to you. You have to put in the work, you have to put in the, the effort and the time to actually go out there and even if like just the banquet, the more organized stuff isn't there anymore, you can still find like small service activities you can do. Opportunities yeah. to do that. One of the things that you did this past year was join the Knights of Columbus. And of course, Knights of Columbus is not only about a fraternal uh, organization, Catholic organization that promotes unity and brotherhood and uh, fidelity and patriotism. It's also about how we can be of service to other people. Um, and you're just getting started on that mm -hmm. end of being a knight. Do you think that's going to help you be able to do some of those things as you go on? Yeah, I, I think it, it definitely will. Um, there's a couple different like service things that I know the, the Knights of Columbus do that kind of interest me. One of them is there's a, a highway, six mile road, just, uh, just east of here. And they, they clean the ditch there like, I don't know, once or once a year, maybe some, something like that. And I mean, that's always interesting, interested me because they bring in these massive piles of garbage that you never see, but it's, it's definitely there. And I mean, that, that's one thing that, I mean, we need to protect the earth. It's the that's only- That's part of the service that we owe to uh, protecting God's creation. Yep. There are other things too, you know, that they do that um, involve, you know, some of the collections like coats for kids and those kinds of things. But it's an opportunity not only to get involved with um, actual service, but to live a mentality of service in everything you do. So keep active with that. And uh, again, I thank you for joining the Knights. Well, you know, I really appreciate your taking time to be with us today, and it's important, I think, for us to realize that uh, not only do we preach and teach, but we also teach by our actions. St. Francis said, uh, preach the gospel every day, and if you absolutely have to, use words. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're a great example of being able to do it with words, but in a very special way you do it with your actions. So thanks, Jack, for being here, and God bless Thank you. Thank you. So, Father, today's question is, why can only men be priests? That's really a great question. I hear that one asked a lot. Why can't women be ordained priests as well? The truth of it is that we can only do what Christ gave us in each of the sacraments. So when Christ ordained uh, men at the Last Supper as priests and sent them out, uh, it's presupposed that that, would, that was what his intention was, that he 
was not deliberately trying to exclude women in any way, uh, but that there was a special purpose for him ordaining men. So uh, the simple fact is the church can't change what Christ gave us. I want to thank you for being with us this afternoon, and let's close in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.